for you. Action News 5 at 4 starts now. And we begin with breaking news today. No charges will be filed against Memphis Grizzlies player Ja Morant for flashing a gun inside a Colorado strip club. And this information just released by the Glendale Police Department. That department was able to determine the video showed Morant singing and holding what appeared to be a firearm at Shotgun Willie's on March 4th. Police said they did not receive any calls for service at the nightclub that night regarding a weapon. The report also found that no one was threatened. Now it remains unclear when John Morant will return to the court for the Memphis Grizzlies. The NBA must still conduct its investigation into that video. The Grizzlies next game is tomorrow back home at FedEx Forum. And now to our other big story, the expected release of nearly 20 hours mm -hmm. of additional video and audio from the January 7th arrest of Tyree Nichols. It was supposed to happen today. That has been delayed. Thank you for joining us for Action News 5 at 4. I'm Joyce Peterson. I'm Kim Clark. Judge James Jones ruled in favor of a motion made by a defense attorney for one of the former Memphis police officers charged with Nichols' murder. Action News 5's Parker King joins us live from downtown Memphis with the latest. Parker. And Joyce Kim, that attorney being Blake Ballin, who represents one of the five former Memphis police officers charged with Nichols' murder, Desmond Mills. Ballin said in a statement earlier today that this motion is the result of balancing the interests of transparency with the defendant's right to a fair trial. He said the release of more video on top of what's already been released could make potential jurors in this case draw conclusions prior to the trial. This comes after City of Memphis Chief legal officer Jennifer Sink announced yesterday during city council committee that the video would be released this afternoon. Council chair Mark Tavius Jones told us that this news is disappointing, but he understands the legal process and all day we've been reaching out to all sides on this issue to get the full story on this latest development in the story of Tyree Nichols. Stay with us for our coverage coming up in Action News 5 at 5 and 6 o'clock and we'll have those updates for you. For now, live in downtown Memphis, Parker King, Action News 5. All right, Parker, thank you. Now, today's developments come as the Memphis Police and Fire Departments both wrapped up their own internal investigations into what happened the night that Tyree Nichols was pulled over by Memphis Police. We have learned a seventh police officer has been fired for his involvement in that traffic stop. An eighth officer, a supervising lieutenant, would have been fired but instead opted for early retirement. And just a reminder that the five former Memphis police officers charged with Nichols' murder are expected back in court in May. They appeared in court for the first time last month. Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin III, Justin Smith, Desmond Mills Jr., and Tadarius Bean are all charged with second-degree murder. All five pled not guilty. At the request of Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland and Memphis Police Chief C.J. Davis, the U.S. Department of Justice will conduct a review of the Memphis Police Department's policies and practices after the beating death of Tyree Nichols. Action News 5 Stephanie Douglas joins us live with the details on that. Stephanie? Yeah, good afternoon, guys. Announced just this morning, the DOJ says it will conduct a review to examine practices, training data, and processes related to MPD's de-escalation policies, specialized units, and use of force. Now, this comes after five former MPD officers were charged with secondary murder in the death of Tyree Nichols following a traffic stop on January 7th. But the DOJ also says in a separate review. It will produce a guide for police chiefs and mayors across the country to help them assess the appropriate specialized unit and necessary training. Now, NAACP President Van Turner is an advocate for police reform. Today, he spoke with me about a bill he believes is necessary for Congress to pass to hold police accountable. Now, I'll have more on that bill coming up on Action News 5 at 5 and six reporting live downtown stephanie douglas action news five and stay with us for updates both on air and online as we continue to follow the latest developments in the tyree nichols case all right let's talk about the first alert forecast now <laughs> it is cool and wet today but also warm is that odd it's just uh, outside it's it's cold to me oh i, I <laughs> 
felt <laughs> sticky cold. Meteorologist Spencer Denton joins us now to show us how long this cold snap will last with a first look forecast. Hi, Spencer. Hey, good afternoon. Yeah, we have had a chilly day for the most part with temperatures in the 40s, but we've also had that rain across the mm -hmm. area that moved across much of the mid south. And let's show you what we saw as much as a quarter to a half inch across Shelby County officially here at Action News 5. 0.44, so just under a half inch, but some areas in North Mississippi picking up over an inch of rain so far with this system and we're not done yet. Although we're getting a break right now, nothing much showing up on first alert Doppler radar, but a cloudy gray day across much of the mid south this evening. Temperatures hovering around 50. We should stay mainly dry for this evening, but more rain is on the way for tonight and especially into tomorrow. Your first alert to how much more rain will fall and when the sunshine will finally return in my first alert forecast. All right, Spencer, thank you. More breaking news this afternoon. A juvenile shot in downtown Memphis. Action News 5's Walter Murphy is live from the scene right now with the very latest. Walter, what can you tell us? Well, Cam, we're still working to learn more information, but we do know that the shooting happened from 1 o'clock this afternoon. The victim was taken to Regional 1 Medical Center where he remains in critical condition. Now, the exact age of that juvenile is unknown, but we do know that he was, again, taken to Regional 1 Medical Center in critical condition. We also know that two adults have been detained. The Memphis Police Department do not believe that the suspects knew the victim, but the shooting did happen across the street from the Fogelman YMCA and right beside Visible Music College. Now the school released a statement within the past hour that says in part we can share that a third party visitor to our campus was involved. All visible music college faculty, staff and students are safe and were not harmed and none were involved. Now again we are still working to learn more information. We will keep you up to date as we get that in. But for now reporting live downtown I'm Walter Murphy Action News 5. All right, Walter, thank you for that live report. Stay tuned. Police have wrapped up their investigation into Memphis Grizzlies' Ja Morant after he flashed a gun inside a Colorado strip club and did so on Instagram Live. What the investigators decided and an update on the NBA superstar's suspension. Details just ahead. But first, roughly three years after the death of Breonna Taylor and the Justice Department reveals systemic civil rights abuses and excessive force violations, against the Louisville, Kentucky Police Department. Details from the investigation after the break.